Hi, in this video, we're going to do an example of what's called V notation. Uh, in the learning video, uh, we talked about how important V notation is in what, you're doing as, in what you'll do as an actuary. You're going to see it for the rest of your uh, actuarial career. So this is uh, from module one, section one. Uh, the example again is V notation. So let's just, let's go get right to the example. Uh, and account credits in interest in such a way that the monthly accumulation factor is constant regardless of the month in which the accumulation occurs. The present value two years before a payment of 4,000 plus the present value four years before a payment of 10,000 sums to 9,801. So the question is, or what we're asked to do is determine the monthly accumulation factor for this account. Now, what I wanna do is focus on the first sentence for a second. An account credits interest in such a way that the monthly accumulation factor is constant, regardless of the month in which the accumulation occurs. This tells me that we can use V notation. Now, I'm not using V notation because of the word monthly or because of the word accumulation. It's the word constant that we're using the V notation, uh, the reason that we can use V notation. It's the month, it, the problem could have said the annual discount factor is constant regardless of the year in which we're discounting. That tells me that I could have used V notation. So the V notation, again, from, we know that from the learning video, the V notation is used whenever the periodic discount factor or equivalently the periodic accumulation factor is constant regardless of what period uh, that, that we're discounting or accumulating. So uh, that's the situation that we're in now, so we can use V notation. So the next thing that we have to decide is what is our time unit going to be? And again, you choose a time period, just be consistent throughout the, the, the solution of, of the problem. Okay, so now let's go back to the rest of the example. It says that the present value two years before a payment of 4,000 plus the present value four years before a payment of, of 10,000 sums 9801, but, and then I'm asked to calculate the monthly accumulation factor. So I see two years and four years, I see years in the problem, but then I'm asked to calculate the monthly accumulation factor. So natural time units for this problem would be either months or years. I could see, I could see either one. So now let's choose months. Let's just pick months to start with. Well, if I pick months, months, then the, the 4,000, it says, is two years uh, after the present value. The present value is going to be a time zero. So I'm thinking present value at time zero. Two years later, if I'm using months, would be time 24 on my timeline. And then four years later would be time 48 on my timeline. So my units along the, the bottom of my timeline are going to look like this. And then going back to the problem, I got this 4,000 at time after two years and, and 10,000 after four years. And so a, a natural or, or a, a, a common uh, timeline then students would make looks like this. They would put the 9801 um, uh, above time zero, the 4000 above time 24, and the 10,000 above 48, and then they might draw in some arrows like this. And I'm telling you, or I'm, 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 I'm suggesting here, don't do that. That's a mistake. I see several things wrong with this, with this timeline. One, when I see the part where 10,000 and an arrow back to 4,000, that to me looks like the 10,000 is being discounted back to a value of 4,000. That's completely different than what's happening in this problem. There was a $4,000 payment at time 24 and a, a separate $10,000 payment at time 48. That, that time 48 payment of 10,000 is completely independent. It does not discount back to, to 4,000, so that's one mistake. A second mistake is a similar mistake. When I see the 4,000 with the arrow going back to the 9801, that's even more confusing to me because it looks like 4,000 is being discounted back to 9801, and 4,000, you discount 4,000, you're gonna get a smaller number than 4,000. You're not gonna get a bigger number, so that's even uh, uh, more confusing for me to see. And then even the 9801 above the time zero value is, is a little bit confusing, and, and I, I would consider it a, a mistake on your timeline because the 9801 is, is technically not a, a, a deposit. It's what the, pres the, the total present value of the other payments are going to be equal to. And so I see at least three mistakes when you draw your timeline like this. So uh, one, two, three, you're out on this. So don't draw your timeline like this. So let's go back to the, the picture that we had before here don't, without the arrows just yet. The 9801, again, I mentioned before, the 9801 at time zero is actually the, the present value of 
the other two payments, the total present value of the other two payments. So what I would do is I would move that 9801 down below the timeline. I have an arrow pointing up to time zero. That arrow on a timeline, the arrow, when I draw the arrow below a timeline, I'm thinking of that as being like my valuation date. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to value all the payments at that particular time. So there was a payment of 4,000 at time 24 that I'm going to have to discount back to time 0 to value it. Then there the payment of 10,000. I'm going to move the 10,000 up a little bit because I need to discount that separate payment back to time 0 also. And then I would add those two present values together to get the 9801. So uh, now in order to you know, write the, an expression for these things. Let me remind you that we're in a monthly, uh, we're using months as the timeline. And so I would let V be equal to the monthly discount factor. And as the monthly discount factor, the 4,000 is being discounted back for 24 months. So that 4,000 would have a present value of 4,000 times V to the 24th. Likewise, the 10,000 would have a present value of 10,000 times V to the 48th. And then knowing that the 9801 is the sum of those two values, I get uh, this equation that 9801 is equal to 4,000 times v to the 24th plus 10,000 times v to the to the 48th. That's called an equation of value. So when you see an equation, it's the the expression equation of value. This is an example of an equation of value. Now you've got to recognize this that that this is a uh, quadratic. It's a quadratic in v to the 24th. And what I mean by that is if you make a substitution you know, let x equal v to the 24th, then you have your, your, your general quadratic. So let me get some uh, extra space here. I just rewrote the quadratic, so now I'm trying to solve the quadratic, so I would first put it in standard form, then I would identify the a, the b, and the c values, then I would use the quadratic formula, and I see that the answers I get have uh, are 0 0.81 or a negative 1.21. As is most often the case in a problem like this, one of them is going to be an extraneous solution, the, uh, the discount factors are never going to be negative, so I'm going to ignore the negative 1.21 solution, and I'll have a, a, a V to the 24th equal to a 0 0.81. I could then solve for V. Remember, V is the monthly discount factor. I could then solve for V by taking, uh, raising both sides to the 124th power, and that would give me the monthly discount factor. But keep in mind, the problem asked me for the monthly accumulation factor. And so in order to calculate the monthly accumulation factor, I use the fact that it's the reciprocal of the monthly discount factor. So the monthly accumulation factor would be this um, this expression 0.81 to the 1 over 24th, the reciprocal of that, and I would get a, a value of 1.0088 uh, and so on as, as that numeric value. Keep that number in mind because now I want to go back to the, to the example. So that's my, that's my answer. Keep it in mind, 1.008818. Uh, and now I want to go back and, and look at the problem and think about, well, what would have happened if we would have chosen years as the timeline? Just trying to illustrate to you, you're not, you, it's not going to make a difference. You're going to get the same answer as long as you're consistent. And this is what I'm going to mean by consistent. Let's look at our timeline if I choose years uh, as the, the units on the timeline. Time values be two and four. I've got the 4,000 at time two, the 10,000 at time four. I've still got a, uh, the total present value of these two payments is going to be 9,801. This time, the V, I'm going to let V denote an annual discount factor. And then my quadratic that I would get from this would be the 9,801 would be V, 4,000 times V squared. The 4,000 V squared is the discounted value of 4,000. The 10,000 times V to the fourth is the discounted value of the 10,000. It sums together to give me 9,801. So I get this quadratic again. Uh, once again, I just go through the same exact steps. I put the quadratic in standard form. I identify the A, B, and the C. I solve the quadratic. This time when I solve the quadratic, this is a quadratic in V squared. So when I use the quadratic formula, it's telling me what V squared is going to be. I get V squared equals the 0 0.81 after I ignore the other, the other uh, uh, extraneous solution. And then that's going to give me a V value of of uh, 0.9. Once again, that's the annual discount factor, and I was asked for the monthly accumulation factor. So wh what's the relationship? What's the equivalent monthly accumulation factor? Well, I know that in order to uh, accumulate for one year, I would have to accumulate for 12 months. So the monthly accumulation factor will be raised to the 12th power to give me the annual accumulation factor. The 0 0.9 is the annual discount factor. The annual accumulation factor then is the reciprocal of that. 
And then in order to solve, it's very easy now, to solve for the monthly accumulation factor, I just raised both sides to the 1 12th power. And once again, you're right back to the exact same answer, the 1.008818 number. So again, this is, you, you choose whatever time, whatever units on the timeline that you want to use, but then just be consistent through the, throughout the problem like we did on, on this one. Okay, there was a lot of stuff in this, uh, in this, a lot of good stuff in this video. Uh, if you didn't understand it well, I encourage you to go back and look at the, the learning video because this is very important and we're going to be using this uh, throughout the rest of the course. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.